Okay, I'm in the process now of laying the power base um, equipment and as you can see here, on top of the cork, I have glued down the power base steel plates. Now these get glued down using PVA and then weighted down and what I've used to weigh them down is I've just got strips of uh, scrap wood and I've placed them on and I weight them down, um, usually overnight and then I very carefully remove the wood and then you're, you're left with with this which is the the power base with the protective uh, film plates on them and uh, once they're dry uh, you then peel the plates off and it just comes off with a uh, you know Stanley just it's like the protective film on any surface you just get, get the edge and then get a hold of it and then off it comes and you just remove that it's quite easy okay so then that's it ready for uh, taking the rails. Now, it does say use PVA, um, but can be a bit temperamental because when you go and, you know, um, check or lift the weights up or lift a bit of wood up, sometimes the wood's stuck to, as you can see, the stains of the, the PVA um, and then it obviously lifts up some of the plates if it's not completely dry. So you've got to make sure that they're uh, well weighted down and leave them overnight to, to make sure that that's um, well fixed in place. The power base stuff comes in several packs um, of different stuff and different parts. You've got the uh, the power base uh, magnets, and you can buy them in a kind of starter pack, which gives you the magnets and the screws and everything to fix the magnets to the locos. Um, but I've had to buy extra um, plates there that does up to five meters. Um, I've also bought these, um, which are uh, etched brass kind of brackets for holding the. Uh, magnets in place under the train um, and, it just, and it just enables the magnets to get closer to the track um, you know obviously for improved pickup and uh, improved pulling power so you even get the wee screws and the, even the drill bit that you require to drill into the bottom of your local to fit these on um, I might not need all of these, I might not need any of them but I've, I've bought them just now just in case and I can always you know return them if I don't need to use them what was also bought is extra magnets, and these are, th are slightly thinner magnets than the ones you get in the pack, which I'll show you just now. Um, and they're different sizes and whatnot, for obviously getting under uh, different parts of different locals. Um, space is obviously an issue for some locomotives. Um, the, the magnets you get in the standard pack um, come with this kind of plastic sheath around them. And it does say what you can do is you can, they sit obviously in here, you cut around the plastic and then you use the plastic as a kind of cradle and you actually screw through the plastic onto the underside of the local but that leaves to me, in my opinion, a kind of you know, horrible looking clear plastic film uh, and you've got to see the magnet and you don't really want to see that when, you're, when the local's going past especially if it's eye level so I'm devising a way to get around that um, on some of the locals that I'm going to be putting the magnets on the HST obviously is one of the ones I earmarked in the last video that needs a wee bit of help if it's got the um, the Mark III's with lights in them, but the clearance under the bogies of the HST is almost non-existent. So there's a wee space in between the the, uh, the fuel tanks and the front bogey that I can maybe use the cradle with this and I can spray it all um, black so you don't see it. The magnets are very powerful. Um, for example, there is one of the plates, oh, it's just attracted there, one of, one of the plates and I'm holding it about a uh, an inch above and it's starting to pull onto the plate. Now imagine if you've got a couple of these on the underside of a, a loco and they're going up here obviously it's going to it's going to draw the loco down into the track and obviously improve traction um, where it's needed. Now I've, I've fitted the power base right from the bottom of the incline and I'm going to fit it right the way up. I've got a bit under the weights just now and I'll show you how I do this bit. Um, I'm going to take it right the way around until it joins the uh, the upper main line. Why? Well, obviously it's going to need the, the pulling power here more than at the very bottom, but I just thought because you're adding a... Oh, there's Lewis Hamilton outside. Um, because you've got a... not even a millimetre, you, you want the track to be level and flat, so I'm just going to continue these all the way up um, just for you know levelness of the track and stuff. So, a wee bit belt and braces as well, 
just to make sure if the local does struggle around the top corner and it's got the magnets fitted, it's going to be able to haul the the um, you know the, the coal hoppers or whatever it's got up the up the incline. So I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I'm going to run through how I do this um, and you know lay the lay the power base magnet or plates there if you like, and um, then I'll show you how I'm going to fix the track down on top of these. Again, they suggest a, a, a PVA style glue for the underside of the sleepers, um, but if you know Pico track, the sleepers they don't. Um, take a glue particularly well so I'm thinking about using a, a kind of all-purpose adhesive um, for faster um, setting as well I'm going to use a UHU glue and we'll try and put in the glue on some of the sleepers putting it in place and then obviously holding it in place while it, um, the glue goes off so that's what I'm going to try on that section and I'll show you how to lay some of the magnets on there Okay, it's now time to fix down the track. Um, obviously, being on top of the risers um, and the incline, I can't get um, track pins to bite into the, the baseboard because it's, you know, it's just going to foam, which doesn't hold anything. So you'll have to glue this on. And this is white, slippery, shiny uh, steel. So what I'm just doing, I'm just keying the surface a little bit with a bit of uh, glass paper, just to take the worst of the, the, the smoothness of it. I don't want to take it all off. Um, and go right way through, and you know I don't want to leave a dip. I'm not going. I'm not sanding that hard. It just takes the the shine off it. The, the, the surface. Okay, but see it's come off my fingers. Now before you put the glue down, give them a wipe. Get rid of all the um, the dust that you've created. And that's that will um, take the adhesive a bit better than the, the smooth surface. I've been asked a question as to what what are the risers. Um, in these packs. Um, the risers are the kind of like blocks um, you get four inch down to a half inch and they're they're not inclined they're just um, you know the same height all along and what you can do is you can actually use some starter inclines along with the risers to build up a different um, format of uh, incline. So there's a three percent to start with and it goes to four then to two then to five and six just using the the, uh, the foam risers. So if you've got a raised section, there's no reason why you couldn't just have, you know, um, a whole circuit full of two inch risers going all the way around your layout, and obviously that would be two inches above the baseboard. Um, it's a very expensive way of doing it. I didn't do it that way because I used ply um, on the on the pine legs because this was a very expensive way of uh, achieving a, a raised section. But if you, I suppose if you're doing it in conjunction with a an incline, it would be more cost effective and, and simpler than using bits of ply and stuff. So that's that's a riser, the sets of risers, and that's the um the incline starters. And you also get the the sets which obviously I've bought the three percent. I hope that clears up um, what a foam riser is and what a foam starter is. Um but as I say it explains it all in the package of the uh, the Woodland Scenics um, terrain system and uh, it shows you how far you'll have to achieve to get from 0 to 4 inches in 16 feet if you're using a 2% and in the case of the highlighted one that's what I've got which is 0 to 12 feet in 4.5 inches I'm now going to apply the adhesive to the, the bottom of the rails in order for it to stick against the steel. I'm not going to put glue on every um, sleeper, or maybe the odd, you know, every every four or five. I've just got some glue that I've mixed up here with a long wee spatula thing, and uh, try and work as quick as I can because this thing has quite a, a quick setting time. Um, so on the bottom of the sleepers. You'll notice with the Pico sleepers, every 
every four or five there's a flat bottom sleeper that's not hollowed out. I would recommend that's where you put the glue for maximum um, you know, connection and uh, contact. Don't go too crazy with the amount of glue though. Okay, in the space of five minutes, um, I have applied the glue to the sleepers as you saw, uh, quickly pressed it into place and it's, it's started to take uh, onto the steel plates. Now, the stuff I was using was um, some Arrowdite. Now, I had mentioned the UHU glue, which is, which is good as well. It gives you a bit more uh, time to, to kind of work with, um, but I'm running out of that and I had this packet lying around which is rapid. Um, um, when it says rapid it really does mean rapid because by the time I started to apply the nice um, wet adhesive here I got to about there and it started to go tacky so I had to actually mix more for the last six inches of the bit of track Now the bit of track's less than a metre long it's only a yard um, so you know I'll show you how quickly the glue actually goes off um, and you can probably see every so sleeper or so there, there's one there, and then another one there. Every four to five sleepers, as I said, there's a flat spot on the bottom of the track. Um, you can see the one there, it's not been kind of, um, you know, uh, hollowed out if you like. And that's where I put the, the glue. I would recommend mixing small amounts. I mixed a bit too much there and basically wasted half it because it went hard before I you know, used it all. So I've got the track in place there. I'd obviously um, test fitted it prior to, to laying it to make sure I got the right curve that I wanted and also to the flow that obviously where the red uh, track set of pieces that's where the join is there and I wanted a nice um, flow between the two plates uh, the two rails because you know sometimes when you you have a, a join on a curve it can get kinked uh, I wanted to you know alleviate any problems with the tra uh, trains running over it so I've, I've used this track set I think to hold it in place while it's gluing uh, if the track doesn't exactly run you know, perfectly to the plates, who cares, it's going to be ballasted uh, as long as the centre of the track has got um, the steel on it, that's obviously where the magnets are going to be between the wheel sets and the bogies. Um, I've just got a, tra a straight piece track set in there just to hold it straight because obviously I'm going to continue the straight track right up on top of these plates. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. That's me fit the next section of track in place here, um, up until the join here. And I made sure the join in the track is directly over these two holes that are pre-drilled in the plates. Now if I take one of these ones here you can see where the holes are. They're for feeding dropper wires um, through. What I've done in this case, uh, I've used the, the fish plates as the, the connectors for the dropper wires. As you can see there with the brown and on the other side we've got the blue. What you have to watch is that um, you don't get any of the bared wire contact in the metal plates because if it does on both sides you're going to give yourself a short circuit but you can see that I've got the blue and uh, the browns on this side and it's, there's no um, connection with the plates there's no short circuit no problems with tracks um, or trains running on the track so that's carefully done and I've just drilled it through the bottom here that will get drilled through the, the base and fed to the, the bus wire next stage is fitting the, the plates underneath the track here but I've got to work out where the track's going to go in the first place. And what I've done is I've laid it in the position I want and I have taken a, 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 a biro uh, and you can see the lines there can quickly scribble down the corner of the tracks and when I lift the tracks it'll leave a, a template as to where the track was. And then I know where to, obviously to apply the, the power base plates. I've put this track set a piece in, in situ here so there's the join, I get a nice smooth transition there and obviously as it goes around the corner towards where it joins the existing point work it gets a bit sharper but when the, the low goes on the flattened level it doesn't have as much of an issue as when it's on the incline and curving that's the, the critical point in inclines if a train is on it an incline 
that's that's all very well and good, but if it's on a, a sharp curve, it will, um, you know, affect the traction. So that's why I've tried to make the curves as smooth as possible. Okay, if you had a, you know, a 16 foot long layout that you had um, space for an incline, that'd be perfect. You could make it just straight up the hill, but most of us, I'd imagine, would have to cram it into a, a more limited space. So we're going to have to make use of a slight curve on our inclines. I suppose that's where power base might uh, come into its own. So we're kind of nearing the final phase of track laying um, with the power base and uh, I showed you in the previous clips, you know, gluing the track down ever so uh, carefully with, with sleepers. Not every sleeper, but you apply glue to some of the sleepers. Initially I used the, the um, Evo Stick Rapid, but I came across this, which is Evo Stick Control, and it actually has a slower uh, setting time and it gives you control for moving it around for up to two hours and then you leave it for around six and after 16 it says in the packet it's totally fixed and that's what I used for the second section because I needed a bit more adjustment to make sure the track was straight etc um, etc et so I'm thinking about using that stuff for the last section just to allow me to get time to you know manipulate the track to where I want it we'll see how it goes so I'm now going to lift the track and I'm going to glue the plates down with PVA and weigh them down overnight until they're, they're dry. When it comes to adding glue to the bottom of the um, DCC concept plates, it does say on their, uh, their website and through their own YouTube video to add a tiny bit of glue to the bottom of these. However, um, when I'm laying it on the foam, and the, uh, the cork, you know, there's a bit of um, you know, give to it, if you like, because it's soft, softer than, say, plywood, and the plates aren't exactly 100% um, flat, they're obviously been, you know, they're that thin, they're flexing. So when you lay it down on the, the cork, the tails and the, the head, if you like, of the plate tend to um, leave the surface of the, the cork. So if you only put a tiny wee spot um, and near the middle areas of the, the plates, I get the impression that um, it wouldn't take too long for the plates to start lifting. And you don't want that if you've got a track down on top of it and then ballast. Um, you know, you don't want to have to repair your track. So I give it quite a liberal coating, to be honest, um, with white PVA. Now, let's get my kind of glue spreader, and I've obviously marked out the, uh, the track, the shape where the track's going to curve. So I know where to put my PVA and I just kind of do it, you know, a section at a time, maybe two or three plates and just spread it out with an old bit of wood or one of these glue spreaders that I managed to pick up from B&Q or something ages ago and uh, just kind of comb it into that. I let it sit for five, ten minutes just to kind of soak in a little bit as well um, before putting the plate down. I'm going to do up to the top section just now, up to where it meets the, the level. And I especially make sure that I get glue right in the, where the, the tails, if you like, the, of the plate are going to sit. Give it no excuse to lift. So once I've done that, the plate, obviously I wait five minutes, and the plate goes down. And um, I'll just do it just now to show you. I'm leaving about between the plates because they're angled or they're curved, you can, you know, you could, if you're straight track, you can butt it right up. But if it's slightly curved, you can get a bit of give. You leave a wee gap, it's not going to cause too much of an issue. So I just place it in the correct area and press it down. And you obviously glue will squeeze out. And I just get a bit of a wet paper towel or a damp cloth to wipe off the excess that's spilled. And then before I put the weights on, I get bits of paper that I've cut to the, the shape of the curve or the shape of the track and then the wood goes on top of that and then obviously the weight's on top of that. The reason I use the paper is if the glue does ooze out, especially through the kind of small holes that they're, they have in the plates, it's sticking to paper which is easier to get off. If it sticks to the wood, when you pick the wood up it, it, it'll lift the plate up as well. Um, you know, you don't want it to rip it up after, you know, sitting overnight etc because you're back to square one so just um, I would recommend putting a wee bit you know thick paper 
or just normal A4, cut it into strips and lay it on top. It just gives that barrier. And if that sticks to the the um, the you know the cork, the glue, and the the metal, you can easily just peel it off and rip it off. It's not as as uh, difficult as it would. So I'm going to wait and uh, give it five minutes. I'm going to complete the rest of this, and then just I'm going to weight it down like you've seen in my previous clips, and then um, just wait for the next stage. Okay, that's the incline all put down in place now and completed. Um, as you can see there, it joins onto the Y radius turnout and it follows the curve round. Put about a third radius curve here until it gets onto the incline where it opens out and then turns all the way down to the baseboard level there. And that is just around 11 foot of incline and it's gone 0 to 95 millimetres in that time and the incline itself stops here where it levels off. I've tested it, um, trains do run up it, um, everything apart from the HST with the, the coaches that um, with the lights in it which obviously have extra drag, um, it needs a bit of an extra boost. I might fit the magnets to the bottom of that local just to give it that extra bit of you know grunt and traction but every other loco um, from an 8 coach class 37 to the APT E to the Scott Rail Express to the HST executive with eight co uh, seven coaches um, right the way down you know to your DMUs they all run up it without any problems um, at quite slow speeds so that's a good sign I don't have to give them a, a starter and a run up at the bottom um, the HST manages up as well with the power car pushing from behind um, because if you're you know if you into your uh, laws of physics and all that um, pushing from behind gives more control and you know like a BMW for example you get better um, you know push off the line if you like the rear wheel drive um, and it's the same with the HST coming up the slope it manages it um, you know just as easy as it does with the, uh, the power car at the front. So, I'll just let you see some trains running up the newly installed incline. If you have any questions about this video, please get in touch. As I say, I've not fitted any locos with the power base magnets as yet, but all the magnets, all the, sorry, the base plates there are all glued in place. The track's on top. Um, as you can see, it curves around nicely. There's no kinks at the join there. All the way around. Here we go. Okay, so hope you find this video useful. Um, got some pointers out of it, and uh, you know, obviously, I've used two or three glues here, and hopefully, I've pointed out the the ones that I would prefer to use. Um, and let's see if there's any questions, just get in touch. Thanks for watching.